When molecules or small particles are suspended in a liquid, two opposing forces can dictate the overall composition of the mixture. The force of gravity depends on the density of the particles, while the buoyant force is determined by the density of the liquid. If one force dominates the other, particles in the suspension will either cream or sediment. Density is denoted by the Greek letter rho. If the density of the particles is less than the density of the liquid they are suspended in, the particles rise or cream. If the density of the liquid is less than the density of the particles, then the particles sink or sediment. If the two densities are almost equal, or if the net force is too small to direct the motion of the particles, the behavior of the suspension is dictated by random Brownian motion. If you were to track these diffusing particles, on average there is no net motion. Despite this, we know that molecules can diffuse into and out of cells. Motion with a defined direction. So how is this possible? Consider a collection of molecules near the membrane of a cell. Assuming the molecules can freely cross the membrane, some of the molecules will diffuse into and out of the cell. Since diffusion is a random process, the number of molecules leaving the cell will be some percentage of the total number of the molecules inside the cell. The same is true of the molecules on the outside of the cell. Over time, a fraction of these molecules will randomly pass through the membrane into the cell. So, despite the random motion of each molecule, a net inward flow will happen if the concentration outside the cell is greater than inside. We can now define a quantity known as flux, which is represented by the letter J. The flux is defined as the rate of flow, dn dt, per unit area A across the membrane. The flux will depend on the difference in concentration, delta C, the separation between the two regions, delta X, and the mobility of the molecules as given by the diffusion coefficient, D. If we can determine the flux of molecules and we know the total area of the cell, then we can find the total rate of flow of molecules into the cell.